I know, it's been a few months since we talked. It's been a busy holiday season for us. You know, we've had a heck of a time trying to get this website up and running the way we want, bcknife.com. So I know, it's been too long, but I'm back. We've got a full schedule setting up for this summer. Knife companies, manufacturers, knife makers from really all over the, the country. As the rest of the world opens up, maybe we can we can get out of the U.S., take a look at how they make knives in other places too. But for right now, there's plenty of people that we can talk to right here in the good old U.S. of A. Today though, I'm here in Santa Fe and I'm here to see Santa Fe Stoneworks. Great little company. They put stone handles on knives. Uh, they do a lot with Spyderco knives and with other knives. We've been working together with them for, I don't know, a lot of years. They've been around a long time. Boy, they do some beautiful, beautiful work. So I'm honored to, to be here and for them to let us into their their world and, and show us how they do what they do. Stick around. We got a lot coming up today. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm here in Santa Fe with Santa Fe Stonework. I'm Bill Wordle, my son. I'm Miles Wordle. I am semi-retired, till I'm active. I come in late and leave early. Hence the margarita. It is Santa Fe after all. I was an IBM salesman in St. Louis, and in the 60s, the late 60s, I quit IBM. I said, I've done everything they told me to do. I did it well. I had two cars and a house and one child, and I wasn't happy at all. <laughs> and I met some friends of mine that uh, after we got divorced, I left St. Louis and hit the road because I knew I wanted to live out west. And uh, we were selling cookware out of the back of the car at gas stations. I probably learned more about sales doing that mm -hmm. than all the things that IBM taught me. So I went from selling presidents to hustling cookware at a gas station. <laughs> but you can make $100, $150 in a day in, yeah. in the early 70s. Wow. That's a lot That's of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. So we go work a town for a week, make three, four, five hundred each, and we take off and go camping for two weeks. We spent a year and a half. I went all around the West. I had been through Santa Fe in the very early part, and it was always in the back of my mind. It was very artsy. It had freedom. And I went of all the places. I'm going to go to Santa Fe. I came here with about 50 bucks in my pocket, load of cookware sets in the back. Met a girl who was a jeweler. I sold my last sale of cookware sets to a car dealer in Kansas, 150 sets. My biggest sale, I went, I'm going to quit on that one. Yeah. And I noticed they had these Indian beads that all the, everybody wanted, but there weren't many of them. Bought jewelry equipment and started making jewelry. And that lasted for five years. I sold that, we broke up, I sold that business. Moving into a house by myself up in the high, uh, downtown Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, you know, why am I making jewelry in a town where everybody's making jewelry? Yeah. Now, a couple of my guys had inlaid some pocket knives secretly at work, and I saw them. So I fired them, I said, let's make some more. I wanted to do that because I figured no one's doing that. I met a, a partner of mine, a, a guy in town, who bought uh, one of my, to be quite honest, when I was in the house, I didn't have enough money to buy knives and make them, so I started making hash pipes. And he bought a hash pipe from me. And then we got to talking, and he said, I said, well, I, he said, well let's, let's back you into a business. In two and a half years, we made 150,000 hash pipes. Ronald Reagan shut down the head shops. Mm -hmm. And by then, we had enough money to get in the knife. I met some people that were selling China knives. So we bought those and then laid those. And then I met, I went to a trade show in uh, Chicago. Chicago, where I was selling, I was trying to inlay everything. I had pen sets. Inlay gear shift knobs for cars, yeah, those were letter openers. Popular. Yeah, I bet. The knobs are very popular. Letter openers, card business cards, and a few pipes. Yeah. And I met Mitsuboshi Cutlery there, uh -huh. and they saw what we were doing. They said, we can make it real nice. So we started buying Japanese knives. We started inlaying pocket knives. We started going to small craft shows. And people would come up to our table and go, men's gifts and we go men's gifts and they go they're hard to find and i go they're hard to find 
And we both, I remember we both worked two different shows. We came back and looked at each other and said, yeah. we're making men's gifts. So we started selling to women. They like jewelry. Yep. I'm making something that they can relate to. Look mm -hmm. at that beautiful turquoise and pearl in there. And it's not a belt buckle, a tie, or a cufflink. Exactly. It's something he carries every day in his pocket. Best gift. Every time he pulls it out, he thinks of you. Oh, we built a business on men's gift. So we were selling to people that were not buying money. Camilla saw that. Frank Cathcart was the one that found us. And he retired. He was the Sears cutlery buyer. He and, and Albert Baer of Trade. They were buddies like that. They both made each other. He had retired to Denver, saw our product, drove down here on a Friday afternoon to see us. Well, we closed up at 3.30 and he got there at 4. <laughs> I have a philosophy, if you live in Santa Fe, uh, I'm not gonna work till 5 o'clock on a Friday, I'm sorry. I'm it gonna, is Santa Fe. I'm gonna close down at 3.30 and go have a drink. He discovered us and went, wow, you're selling to people that don't buy money. So he stayed over the weekend and was outside front entrance. My partner and I arrive at, at 8 o'clock and Frank Cathcart's sitting there with his suit waiting yeah. for him. <laughs> he hands me his card, I'm with Shrey Cutler. I go, I think I've heard of them. I mean, yeah. I was, we were so, so new, new, new yeah. to the cutlery business. And he stayed and he's the one that encouraged Jim Fergal, the president of that, the company, to mm -hmm. buy into us. And, that's, what, and that's, that's when they taught us how to deal with a knife. So yeah. we learned our expertise with knives. Mm -hmm. Making them pretty is one thing. You can glue everything onto a knife, and if you run it through grinders, you can destroy that thing faster than hell. Mm -hmm. Camillus came in and, and brought in all kinds of equipment. And, yeah. then, and uh, most importantly, Phil Gibbs. Phil Gibbs and, and Mike Dillon. And Mike Dillon. Mike Dillon mm -hmm. was a big support. He was the manufacturing, uh, he was their production. Manufacturing production manager. He was a real true believer in us. Mm -hmm. And so was Phil Gibbs, who is the, uh, was their model maker. When they first brought in the, the first stages of the equipment from Camilla's Cutlery, um, their, their whole philosophy was if they didn't need it or use it, paint it green and send it to Santa Fe. Paint yeah. it green, <laughs> paint it green and still ship it to Santa Fe. Several of our, our, our old timer equipment that we still run, yeah. that is green and still running. I bought my other partner out in 1999. And as I say, I'm a, a, business, a financial genius. I started a business, had two par got two partners, had to buy both of them out just in time to give the business to my children. <laughs> but they've stepped up. Yeah. And they, and at the age of 65, I pretty much put any hands-on physical work. It was all office work and sales and deals. Mm -hmm. But they were running the business then. This is a handcraft business. It's hard to make money. A knife is man's oldest tool. True, yeah. Lapidary work is man's oldest art form. You can find the left eye work in the Egyptian too. That's right. We've yeah. married the two. We don't make the knife, we make them more expensive. <laughs> yeah, you know. And well, you've got you've got a really great group of craft yes. people oh, in there yes. that are just doing the they, job they, day in, day out. They've assembled these yeah. this crew is his. Yeah. We have a dedicated we have one there that worked for me. Yep. But still there too. Yeah. But Try, trying to find a knife sharpener for me. Yeah. It takes me three months. <laughs> To, to train a knife sharpener because we don't just pull through something. We actually sharpen by hand on belts yeah, that's like what any he does. manufacturer what he does, does yeah. right? Yeah. And so we, I, I have to train a knife sharpener. Well, I haven't had to train a knife sharpener for years now because I've got Mr. Carlisle. He's a bear claw knife each year. Make sure you send the knives to bear claw to have to sharpen. But the man is every bit as good as I ever was. And I've got 20 years of doing yeah. that. And in just a few years, he's become so good at But it's hard to find people that are willing to do that and take pride in that and have that attention and to detail. And that's your sharpener that I did not butcher it. I had 20 years of Bill's experience, and then I had 20 years of my experience of doing everything wrong. <laughs> I know. Finding that I solution. did it wrong before you did. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so as you compound that, each person you train should reach that level higher than you. Yeah. If you are training, that person should excel in your abilities because of what you're able to, to divulge to them yeah. of your mistakes and what you found to be correct. In the 60s, after I quit IBM, I, a lot of it was wandering around and 
to where, who am I, where am I, what do I want to be, what am I going to do? Mm. I mean, I'm not, I, I, yeah, I could be a corporate salesman, but I'd be very unhappy at the end of the day. Sure, yeah. And uh, I, I really had a search, and the 60s enhanced that. Yeah. The whole 60s movement thing enhanced the searching for your true self. Sure. And it came to mind, this was after I was, had that jewelry business for three, four years. My mother came and visited once. Yeah. And I knew my grandfather was a stone cutter. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather came from Upper Bohemia, was a stone cutter, and moved to Missouri and worked on the Budweiser building and worked on the wow. state capitol. They were laborers. Yeah. And there's stories there, but, but uh, he knew handwork was out. Yeah. And he had five kids, sent them all to college. Mm -hmm. My, my father was a chemist, mm -hmm. chemical engineering, and hit it just right in the 30s. Yeah. You yeah. know, he made a very good living uh -huh. and always supported his children forever what they wanted to do. And it kind of dawned on me, wait a minute, I'm here cutting rock. Yeah. I was trained to be a corporate salesman, but that's not who I am. Yeah. I, I'm my grandfather. Yeah. And my last name, Wordle? was the name of the logo of the Stonecutters Guild in Upper Bohemia. They really? would finish a building, they were construction people. Uh -huh. On the cornerstone, they put a vertel, which was their logo of the union, wow. of the guild. Mm -hmm. So my last name literally is the logo of the Stonecutters Guild in Bohemia. I went, well, hell, yeah. that's settled. <laughs> yeah. Now, all I have to do is perfect. But the hard, really the harder part was finding my roots in a circular pattern. Yeah. When I came to Santa Fe, I felt like I've lived here before. I can't answer that. I can only tell you I was, I came home and I didn't know soul. Yeah. But I was home. Yeah. And I've been here ever since. Wow. But that word of name, that's really kind of shocked me. Yeah. That I didn't realize that sooner. I, I didn't know that much history about my father. It's unfortunate that my daughter Anna isn't here today. She and my son run, run, they run, it's their business. Well, I went around yesterday and just by myself and a nice gentleman who agreed to drive me all afternoon. And uh, we, we literally just drove around town and took a bunch of video. Some amazing stuff. We're going to show you some clips of that right now. And this is the best driver in Santa Fe. This is Lance. Say hello, Lance. Hello. How's everybody? <laughs> I want everybody to come and visit Santa Fe so I could give you a tour. Hey, if you come to Santa Fe, look Lance up, man. He'll take care of you. I sure will. The next day. We're going to take a look at how we actually make knives here at Santa Fe Stoneworks today. We're going to be going through our uh, rock cutting process, our assembly process, then into our grinding process, and then our finishing process. I'm working with some of the most popular materials uh, that Santa Fe Stoneworks offers. 10 to 30,000 year old woolly mammoth molar. Um, this now this is, is actually a molar right out of this the is This mammoth. is the actual Just molar. Just the way it is. So the way it would sit in within the, the mammoth would be with the roots down and then this is going to be the chewing enamel surface that they use. The enamel surface is worn down and as they wore down, they would pop out that set and grow in the new set. We'll follow up with our mammoth tusk. This is a smaller, what we re refer to as a puck. So the, it kind of goes like so exactly. and then they chop it up like yeah. that. That's so cool. And with some of our most popular gemstone exotic line of material, um, this is going to be Kingman Blue Turquoise. Then they apply um, an obsidian to it and then a bronze matrix. So this is all natural material, none of it's synthetic, it's just been pressed and molded together. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
And then our second lineup for the Gemstone Exotics is going to be the Mojave Green Turquoise with Bronze. Um, lastly, which is some of our newest material, this is called Fordite. So this is overspray from automobile manufacturing from their paint bays that has built up along the tracks that has then been heat treated and cured. And uh, this particular slab here is going to be from the Jeep manufacturer. Wow. Um, and as you uh, grind into the material and cut it, you break into all the different colors that are layering side by side on top of each other. So this is just the overspray from each Jeep e they put each through. Beat. So exactly. different color paints yep. means it all falls to the ground, it layers in Correct. different colors, and then they break it apart. And, and then what's nice beat. about it, it's been heat treated through um, their process, so therefore it's, it's a hardened material. So it works great. Well, let's go ahead and We'll go to the back. Stick around to the end. You get to see these knives all made, and uh, let's make some let's make some knife handles. Let's go. All right. So it all starts here with you. So it kind of all starts here. It's okay if we watch. Love to have you. Do your thing. Don't let us get in the way.
What we're gonna do in here when the product comes in from Grind is we're gonna give an overlook on it. Make sure there's not any flaws in the stones or some kind of unseen gap that we missed. So she's gonna go through, make sure that everything looks good, the knife operates properly, we get all the fills if we have any fills, and then we'll take it from here and go on into the scotch bright. So she's just gonna kind of match the stone with our miscellaneous dust that we have. Some yep. of the dust is made out of G10 or actually from the material itself, so it kind of blends real good together. So now we're gonna come down to our polisher. These are custom built polishers for us. We use a two part polishing compound. It's a rouge and a tripoli. And I wanna say the rouge is gonna pull out any surface grind marks that are still on there. And then the rouge is gonna make it shine. So we're gonna work our brown and then swipe through our blue, creating it, creating the finished product to shine. Guys, it's been a fun time here. It's, it's, where are we? Oh! <laughs> Santa face don't work. Where am I? Santa, you see this is what happens when you bring me out for margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. That don't even know where I am. Have you, have you been to Maria's for lunch? You know, I, I was at Maria's you today. You were! I just happened to be there with oh, you guys. Well, you, you, you can't yeah. come to Santa Fe and not have margaritas. <laughs> not we, have margaritas. we had a few margaritas then. We, we had a great time here in Santa Fe at we Santa Fe Stoneworks. Listen, you see all these knives right here? They're going to be on our website at bcknife.com and in our store in Midland, Texas. They're amazing knives. This is what you saw being made today by the nicest family that I know. American, oh, ha American yeah. handcrafted. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely the top of the line. You know, this is what I talk about when we're talking about American-made knives, or any knives for that matter, no matter where in the world, knives are made by real people, yes. real families yep. that are knife people, and that's what we're all about here at Bear Claw, and that's what they're all about here at Santa Fe Stoneworks. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you, oh, thank you for coming. I really appreciate, really appreciate it. Really it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh. You guys, the, the craftsmen here are just unbelievable. Some of the, the, the nicest people I ever, I've ever met. And it's been a pleasure being here in Santa Fe with Santa Fe Stoneworks. Thank you very much. I look forward to carrying your knives well into the future. I hope to come back very, very soon. And we're going to do some exclusive deals, maybe for this you holiday yes, season here at Santa talking. Fe. So we're going to do some great stuff. And thank you for, you for watching. And if you'd like to get some of these knives, I mean, there's only literally four, five, six of them that we made today. They will be available. So bcknife.com. 
And you'll have a full-length video of step-by-step -step of how those how are made. Exactly Absolutely. Made. It doesn't get any better than that. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. so much. My pleasure. It. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure seeing it's all of you. It's great to meet fellow uh, knife makers. Absolutely. Knife. Absolutely. Thank all you. my people. Thank you, folks. Just remember... Santa Fe Stoneworks is a knife that you can trust. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, thank you very much for joining us today. Until next time, we'll see you then. Take care. Thank you.